Hey, what's up, everybody? It's real Jordan and Demi. I'm here in LA. Demi's in New York. And today we have Aaron Bruno, aka AWOL Nation, from some like uh, undis. What, what are you doing there? What are you doing there? He's getting ready for the pod. Yeah, instead of having like a tequila shot or something, I'm at the age uh, where my fun comes in the form of an electrolyte shot of salt. Oh. So that's that's what I thought I'd do to give me a little boost to um, match y'all's energy level. That's well, I pr appreciate it. I appreciate it. So is that, a, is that is there a flavor going on there? Or is it just like straight up like no flavor? Just straight salt. What? <laughs> salt straight and water. Salt. And it, it, I get... I did. Uh, I have to watch that, you know, and make sure that um, I get enough electrolytes because I'll cramp up sometimes if I'm surfing and, um, you know, m maybe I'm in the ocean when the waves are a little bigger than I'm comfortable with and I get nervous, uh, you know, and I'm like kicking into a wave or whatever. And my, if my calf cramps up, it's lights out, you know, because it hurts so bad that, uh, you know, you could you could drown. You know, because you can't really kick, so you're kicking yeah. through this weird, paralyzing uh, pain. You know, so anyways, that's why I have these electrolytes. The waves are about to get good. The the Pacific Northwest is waking up, and uh, winter is coming. So I'm looking forward to that. I've Not actually never been surfing. That's a, like sick. Yeah. Um, yeah. What's your favorite surf spot? <laughs> really hard to do. Um, I got a couple secret spots um, over the years that I've discovered, but. You know, locally, like I live pretty close to Zuma Beach here in Malibu, um, and that's a really pretty beach. So when when it gets good and there's a combination of a of a summer swell and a winter swell, it could get quite uh, peaky and fun. Um, oh, and that, okay. that's usually around this time in the fall, October, November. So um, yeah, that's that's kind of the, the most fun time locally here. And then as we kick into January, February, um, I go further north, like past Santa Barbara and that kind of zone. Sounds cold. Sounds cold. It gets cold. Yeah, it gets cold. Have you ever seen a shark? Uh, thanks for jinxing me, and I will <laughs> now. Go, uh, so if I if I get killed by a shark, this will be Brad. Like, so <laughs> we'll have um, you know prophesized that death. But anyways, no, I have never seen a shark. Um, my wife is terrified of sharks, which is like I don't know why she's not in the ocean, but um. <laughs> A friend of mine claims that Jaws is a perfect movie front to end. That's debatable, I know, but he he's onto something, I think. And I love Jaws very much, but no, I haven't seen a shark. Uh, knock on wood, I'm very lucky. I just cut out of sight, out of mind. They're there, but I don't know. They, I don't seem tasty to them, so it's all good. Well, I, I I just hope that I don't pull up Pitchfork one day and it's an article about a Wall Nation uh, oh, shark attack. No. So, anyway, or um, or I get attacked by a shark survive yeah where it's where the shark's tooth around my neck and i'm kind of cooler from that point yeah up. that's, so, that's, that's pretty badass so, that's yeah, like, that would be that's like those those actual shark tooth. like who hasn't had a shark tooth necklace like growing up you know what i mean yeah or puku shells uh that was a big deal for me in sixth grade and i think kids kids are on puku shells again it seems uh -oh. and, um, my dark it, secret it, is that i had a rat tail when i was in elementary school I had a mullet, but it wasn't even a cool mullet. It was just sort of like, I didn't want full long hair, um, but having just a little bit of that excitement back there a made me feel in the back. Yeah. cool. But it was so strange looking back because the rest of my hair was just like a, just a complete normal haircut, you know, like a church going kid haircut. And then I had this little curly thing. And I remember um, it's coming back as you can see, but um, I'd say. get ready for school and then I would like, comb it and then push it up and then back down and like fluff it to be curly Whoa. This is the truth. nice nice anyway. yeah we, we were just talking about curly hair versus straight hair demi's going with her natural curls today uh, i'm a fan i love curly hair yeah let it be wild you know you can only have it for one day that's the problem with curly hair is mm. like you never know what you're gonna get you know what i mean it's like is it gonna be a good is it gonna be humid Right. You know, you never know. Yeah. Like. Yeah. Yeah. My so, hair um, was curlier when I was younger. And as I've gotten older, um, I've tamed it a little bit, but it's, it, it gets wavy. Hence the old mullet in seventh grade. And I was a dancer. So I wore, I'd wear hammer pants, whoa, steel tip shoes. And what I mean by I was a dancer, I had just discovered like great dance music and hip hop. So, and you know, this was in the eighties and, um, 
I had like a Raiders turtleneck with a gold chain in front and a Pittsburgh Pirates hat because Chuck D from Public Enemy wore one of those. And <laughs> and and like I told people I could dance, but I couldn't really, but I told people I could. And then when there was sixth grade dance, there was like a circle and everybody's like, you know, cheering me on to go and I, I chickened out and I didn't dance, but I, I was dressed to dance. Damn. Nice. This is wow. the story of my life I wanted to share with you guys. Damn. Wow. So he was a dancer first. That's not in Wikipedia. It's not on Wikipedia. <laughs> adding to your Wikipedia you page. That. Yeah. You that, that, that you started your career as a as a as a, a dancer. flow dancer. Um maybe not my career, but I started my social life on the wrong foot doing that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well add to the personal life section. Okay. So first of all, Aaron, tell tell us where you're coming from here. What what is this a home studio situation? Yeah. What you got going on? Yeah, this is my main studio, my main place of of uh, work slash creativity when not on the road, and um, yeah, it's a nice day here. It's beautiful. I so let's talk about um, the new album, uh, Phantom Five. So are you are you one of those people who's constantly writing music, or do you like take a break? and tour or do whatever and then go back to music or you just always have like a constant flow of songs coming through um i i i always have I, new ideas um you know some of which are good some some are bad and um so i always i always am open to you know what the possibility of a new song idea coming um but in currently right now as i speak to you um I'm enjoying not recording anything or not writing anything because I've I've been building so many songs um, mm -hmm. over the last like really since all the lockdowns you know all the way till now I even started a new heavy metal hardcore project called the Barbarians of California. Of California, let's yeah. go! <laughs> yeah, did, did he, hardcore, he, though, like what's up with that? Like we have to understand this whole thing. What? Sorry, what was the question? Why hard? Why a hardcore band? Like what? Well, that yeah. <laughs> I've just always loved heavy metal, punk rock, and 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 hardcore music, right? So, and I was in a band called Insurgents in in the late um, '90s, before um, before uh, I started taking singing more seriously and and melody more seriously and songwriting. Um, so it's, it's kind of a full circle moment, returning back to where I came from. Um, but I've always kept you know one foot in what was going on in heavy music and. Um, with AWOL Nation too, you know, when we go on tour, a lot of people will, uh, you know, I've talked to the different people at the shows over the years and they're like, you should do a heavy project because we, we tend to lean a little heavier live as, as most bands probably do, um, with the AWOL stuff. And so finally had the time when, when the whole world got shut down and tours got shut down, you know, I'm like, okay, well I'll make multiple AWOL Nation songs and I'll finally um, you know, do this this heavier project that I, I've always wanted to. And my engineer, Eric Stenman, he um, started writing all these riffs and had them kind of like, you know, compiled up. And uh, so that's that's where that came from. So we're actually doing one show and it may be the only show we do, but it's October 19th at the Troubadour in Hollywood, the world famous Troubadour. Um, so I we, I live we've been rehearsing for that. You know, I just got back from an AWOL tour, but we've been dipping right into... Uh, you know the barbarian stuff and it's equal parts exciting and completely terrifying because i don't even know if i could sing all this this shit live you know i don't know if i could cuss either i apologize um you're good you're good anyway so, that's what that is you know you you talk about taking serious uh singing more seriously and and the difference you know between a wall and uh your hardcore project that's one thing i i've always found interesting about your music is that regardless of of what the style of song that you're releasing, you always do interesting things with your voice. You have Thank sort you. of like the shouty version. You have like the cool laid back version. You have sort of the distorted version. Do you kind of, um, have you always been experimenting since you started the AWOL nation project? Have you always been experimenting with different ways to present your voice? Is that a thing? Yeah, not necessarily by uh, design. It's just more circumstantial. You know, by the time I started this, this deal, um, the AWOL deal, uh, that was like, you know, 2008, nine, when I really started to create these songs. Um, and at that point, um, I had, I think, dragged my voice through the gutter, you know, um, for, for 
a variety of reasons, but, um, you know, whether it was my first band, which was a punk band, and then I was in a hardcore band, then I was in sort of a rock band, and then kind of like an indie pop band, you know, so I had, I had explored different territories vocally. Um, and I think I was always probably searching without realizing that. And then I landed on my feet with, with the AWOL Nation project and felt, um, yeah, when you, think, when you think about the the AWOL Nation catalog and you think about your background, it kind of makes sense. Like, I, I always love, of course, you know, I like hard stuff. So I, I love the like breakdown part and run, like the hard part and run, mm -hmm. which is very kind of punk rock. Um, so I, I know that this album is kind of like your first album as like truly an independent artist. Um, mm -hmm. Now I'm not going to do that. I don't want to, I feel like music podcast. Now there's always like the section where they talk about the, the dark side of the music industry. That's not what I'm yeah. interested in. Um, mm -hmm. I'm interested in like the recording and production process going, you know, by yourself, the difference between, you know, doing something like back in your Red Bull days versus now independent. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And, and I appreciate that. I, I, I think, industry talk is boring for music lovers in a lot of ways. And it's certainly boring for me, you know, when I was, would check out interviews of bands I like um, still to this day, but I was really lucky with AWOL Nation that even when I signed with Red Bull Records, we sort of had an agreement that, that they wouldn't be able to tell me, you know, what was up or down with my music. Um, but when you turn in a record and you have a serious partner, decisions are gonna be made for, you know, what, what the single is gonna be or, you know, whatever you know if it's a partnership just like any partnership people are going to want to be heard um so that would be the fundamental difference to now um in that there are no opinions other than my own and my team of management and family you know and loved ones and friends and people i trust um so that'd be the only difference but i have been very lucky i i, I will tell you and red bull was very fair to me in that way they didn't they didn't break our deal as far as you know, getting involved in my creativity. There was never a, um, you know, a negative discussion or um, uh, an argument over a chorus or a verse or a sound. There was nothing like that. And uh, so I look back fondly on those times and, you know, I didn't really necessarily have any, any um, huge dramatic uh, fights or, or situations with any, I was signed to another label um, after them as well. But these are independent labels, though, so it never felt um, it never felt like being signed to a major label, which I had been signed to in previous bands. Um, so there was always an independent spirit, but but now is is the ultimate independence, and it feels really good. So you know, we went with a song called "Panoramic View" with as our first single, and that was just based off an instinct rather than tests or a bunch of suits saying, mm, you know, this is the shiny new single or whatever. And um, and it's it's gone pretty well, so I, I I think we made a good decision, and it was based off our heart and soul. Since you don't really have A and R in the traditional sense anymore, do you, who do you bounce ideas? Do you like run stuff by your wife, or like how do you <laughs> kind of decide? I was just a vibe for people. I yeah, was like, who's uh, your person? You know, what I, mean? I, I got, you know I I have I have a core group of let's say like five to ten friends that that I still really trust musically, their instincts, and you know we're similarly like aged if i can say that where we have you know ref pop culture references and there's just people i respect a lot that if they you know friends who send me music still to this day and say hey you should check out this new band um i think you'll like it and i usually do so the, you know those are important friends to keep around when it comes to this and then you know my manager these two guys burko and scott we've been together forever and so um yes i do trust some people my wife, we just get, we just had twin boys, identical twin boys, uh, eighteen months ago, and so she has no. I don't even think she's heard the Phantom Five, <laughs> straight up. Oh, really? And I don't blame her. I'm like, hey, you know, I, uh, you know, I we just entered the top five at radio. It's a kind of a, you know, and she's like, you know, she can't even. She's, she she's like, I got to change the snipers. Hang on a second. <laughs> to care, and you know, that's a good thing too, because I don't need a bunch of yes people around in my world. Um, with with music and how it's gone um i i've i've received enough showering of compliments that um you know it i think it's better for me to to be around people who keep it real and i have plenty of friends who you know you could tell when you when you play a song for some people um if they're not 
they're trying to be polite, you know, but, but you could tell that they weren't blown away to say the least. Yeah. You have to like read people while they're listening. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's also an uh, awkward thing, even if it is a professional musician to be like, Hey, listen to this song, give me your opinion. You know, it's just kind of, it's a, really weird. Yeah. And yeah. when I was younger, I used to go around and show people new demos or new music at the most in absurd volume, you know, like it would have to be the sun setting. We're going to go park at this park right here. We're going to smoke a joint or a cigarette, whatever. We'll get, you know, and, and I'm going to play you this thing at a volume that will be, um, that will damage your ears, you know, and that's not how we roll anymore, of course. So, um, I, you know, I've let go of, of trying to control the situation because um, most people just check out their music on their phone just like this, right? You know, if there's, a, if there's an album I'm anticipating or a band I really like, I want it to be a car listen. Um, or here in the studio where the speakers are nice, but mostly people just check it out here and, and try to decide if the song's good enough, if they want to explore more. How much I'm do like, you... I ahead, keep David. thinking back to that punk band that you said you used to be, like, was your first project. And I find it so interesting because some of my, like my favorite artists, for instance, Max Fry, um, he's like this indie kind of like punk, post-punk kind of artist mm -hmm. right now. Um, no one, No one really knows, but he has like, at least two or three projects prior that are completely different mm -hmm. from the Max Fry like self-titled project. And, and it just shows like the range, you know, that an artist can have that maybe they only show one side of themselves throughout a project because, you know, they're trying to keep it cohesive or it's just, it just pans out that way. But like, can you bring us back to that punk band? Cause I'm super curious. Yeah. So I, ha I had a punk band, um, uh, when I was 15 and 16, like 15 through 17 called the ice monkeys. Um, oh and, uh, there were a couple different lineups. First was with, uh, like my best buddy in, in sixth grade. Um, and he, you know, he, he played drums and I played guitar and that was the first time I had met anyone else who could play an instrument. Um, not that I was a prolific guitar player at all. I just had a guitar in my house because my parents played guitar. So, you know, me and this kid, Matt, bonded over um, skiing and surfing and skating and that, you know, that kind of thing. And sports, baseball, football, you know, just stuff kids do, right? And um, he's like, yeah, I play drums. I'm like, well, I play guitar, even though I don't, I didn't really, I just knew how to play a few chords. So we got together, named it the Ice Monkeys, and then went our separate ways. Then in high school, um, this is a long-winded answer to his, to your simple, um, to what should be a, a simple explanation. But <laughs> anyways, I, I met another guy and we started an actual punk band and, and started playing shows. And I was talking about this recently. My very first show with the Ice Monkeys, I was really scared, completely terrified, wanted to cancel it, was hoping to get rained out. It was at <laughs> a, uh, someone's, a girl named Laura, her um, backyard. At Shout out Laura. Shout out to Laura. Shout out all of kids that would like put together these DIY shows, right? Yeah, well, there were no flyers, it's just word of mouth, right? And so yeah. we played and there were like 40 people, but all, let, let, let's say 35 of these people immediately started mosh pitting. Yeah. So my first show, I was so lucky to have um, seen an instant reaction um, and, and, and interactive power, you know? And so I was hooked from that point on. I was very lucky because most people's first show just suck. And and our third show absolutely sucked. Um, even our second show probably did too. And was right in front of three people at the teen center. But this first show, this first moment was so impactful to to see that it actually could work. Mm -hmm. um, and, I, and I look back and it feels so lucky. Who knows? You know, may, maybe if it would have got rained out, I wouldn't have ended up being here right now talking to you. Sure. you know? Very lucky for that first band, Ice Monkeys. And then I discovered the underground of, of, of punk rock, which was called hardcore music. Mm -hmm. And especially in the 90s in Southern California was really, really a good special moment. Um, and so we we morphed into a heavier project called Insurgents. And then I could go on and on and on. But that was the or origin of me playing music. Sick. I have a bad brains tattoo. So that's like my. my <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, yeah I didn't know that. Yeah. So bad brains obviously are incredible. And I, I, I was a little late to the, to the scene, you know, so I didn't get to experience the bad brains um, or minor threat. You know, by the time I discovered it, it was, it, they had come and gone, but bad brains, minor threat, you know, Fugazi and all these different bands uh, shaped music more than re people realize, of course. 
Yeah, I, I, I'm sort of a DC guy, so I spent a lot yeah. of time see. Yeah, so totally. yeah. Um, are you still a Raiders fan? I am. Yeah, and um, we finally have a defense, and it's a good time to be to be a Raider fan because you know we're playing we're playing arguably the worst team in the NFL on Sunday, and so I, I in. I can't believe I'm, I'm going to jinx it right now. But in years past, I would think we would lose this game because our defenses were so bad and we would overlook a lesser opponent. But this time, since our defense is so aggro with Max Crosby and Robert Spillane, underrated linebacker, I think I think uh, we'll be okay. And then we'll be 2-1 and one, heading yeah, into Cros- Cleveland or Cleveland's coming to town. Yeah, Crosby, Crosby's a beast. Is Antonio Pierce the guy in your mind? I didn't like uh, some of his decisions in week one, but um, uh, so far I love him. When they fired Josh McDaniels on Halloween last year, it was the greatest sports moment. Why do people I, keep I, firing I him? Stand, yeah. I couldn't stand Josh McDaniels. Couldn't stand the guy. Um, no. And so so when Coach took uh, Coach Pierce took over, uh, I speak as if I'm on the team, of course, because I love yeah. him so much. Um, I've actually used my music to get closer to the Raiders. I did a little intro song for um, – this podcast for the beat writers of the Raiders. And it's called, um, it's called just win the just win podcast. Um, it's, you know, it's on every streaming platform, but I convinced them to let me do the intro music for that. Oh, okay. Interesting. Yeah. I'm, I'm a chiefs fan, so I'm not going to gloat. I'm not going to, you don't need to gloat. The reason you don't need to gloat is because of Christmas day last year, my friend. Yeah. Fair, fair. We'll see yeah. how it goes this year. No we'll see how it goes yeah. this year. <laughs> you won the Super Bowl, so dude, you know, you win, but still, like that was the best Christmas possible. Oh yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I wish Max would just kind of chill it. Like he just like pushes Pat down. He like puts him yeah. he like elbows him for no reason. Like just, you know, yeah. like chill out, Max. Yeah. I hear you, but you know, that's how you get in people's heads, whatever it takes. Yeah. Just win. And that's like classic Raiders behavior. That's yes. that's call it like it is. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. I that's been the sport. Raiders really through music too. Cause all the bands, you know, my older brother hit me too when, you know, in the eighties was, was all rap music and that was still underground NWA. And um, he, like I mentioned, Chuck D earlier from public enemy, even he from New York had a uh, Raiders hat on and the gear just looked so cool. Ice cube, easy wearing a Raiders hat. And, and I was just hooked. Yeah. Ice cube with the Jerry curl and Raiders hat is like, it's perfect. So cool. Yeah. 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 Um, we, we have to by law ask you about sale cause it's a music podcast. Um, yeah. uh, and I'm not going to do, we're not going to do the whole origin story, but I know it's been used for a lot of different things. Um, would mm. you have a favorite placement or use of sale, like in a TV show or commercial or something? Uh, I, you know, it's been, there's been so many, um, you know, the cat thing was awesome. <laughs> uh, and then the song run has actually had more comedy. So like, you know, so I'm more familiar with some of those memes and, or, or viral clips, but, yeah. uh, I, you know, I just feel completely lucky and, and so fortunate that that sale has been used for so many different, um, you know, viral moments, but, Probably some of like this isn't a sexy answer, but some of the surf stuff I've seen, you know, tackling huge waves or, um, you know, the Red Bull skydive stuff has been outrageous and cool. Um, I will say on an impact level, when that show Vikings used it for a trailer, that really helped a lot um, because the song was really taking off and that kind of put it into overdrive. Um, But for all the songs, which is not what you asked about, I will tell you. The instrumental of Run, not even the part that's mostly known with the riff that you mentioned earlier, but the instrumental um, before that part happens was used for the solo trailer. So I'm part of Star Wars Legacy. And that was like a big moment. Nice. For me. And you can I'm really curious. curious. What, what? what did you say, Demi? Well, no, I'm actually so, so curious about like the making of Sail. Like, I think the instrumental, like, can you take us back to like where you started that song? And also, do you have ADD? Like, what were you thinking? You know what I mean? Like, were you yeah. what were you thinking during that 
writing. <laughs> it is so it's so like memorable and catchy. Uh, I don't know what else. it was. Kind of an out of body experience. Um, you know, with, you with writing, with, you know, with writing songs, though, sometimes you you come up with something and it just comes out of you very naturally, and and you know, it's just it's just a uh, a result of years of listening to music and trying and and failing. You know, so that's instrumentally, it's just my love for all genres of music pouring out into that song and that first record really in general. But in particular to your question to ADD, a, a, in high school, I was definitely told that I could have that because my grades were so poor. <laughs> and I think my parents thought, well, why is this, why is this guy getting straight Fs and Ds, oh you know, and like I, I'd get a C minus here and there, maybe flirting with a C plus, but I was a terrible, terrible student. And, um, you know, I just didn't care what they were teaching me about. I really didn't. And I'm not trying to encourage people to not listen to their teachers or their elders or anything like this, but I would just be sitting there thinking of songs or surfing or realizing, I think the waves are good right now. Why am I sitting here listening to, you know, advanced algebra or whatever like I, this doesn't make sense to me it's not how my brain works so you know mm -hmm. school and the structure of school isn't for everybody and it certainly wasn't for me um so it's it was a sarcastic anecdote lyrically that i threw down right there and it just kind of came out of my head and mm -hmm. i remember writing it down before i sang it and thinking i don't think anyone's i've never heard someone sing about this so this feels nice mm -hmm. um and then that became a line that you know is is fairly well known now so it was a bit of an accident That's really cool. and i work i'm i'm kind of a production nerd because i think it's because i'm not a musician so i just find it fascinating but what what kind of filter or plug-in or what was how did you get the that kind of muffled distorted sound for the actual the 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 word sale the 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 yeah yeah what what's on that what's the sauce sure uh there is no sauce. It was an accident. So uh, the the guy who was my buddy Kenny, who was the engineer on that first initial session, I ended up you know adding some guitars and other instrumentation. But the the first night that that was recorded and written, um, I he left the studio and I said, hey, I'm I'm gonna just you know I knew how to operate Pro Tools. Um, in a, at a basic level, so I was like, I'm gonna I'm gonna just work on this right now and. So the chords were mapped out. Um, and so I hit record to sing and I just sang it uh, once. Um, I sang that first verse and that first sale um, once, and then I doubled it. And uh, when he came back, he looked, he could just see, as you would know, as, as a production nerd, as you, you, as you claimed, I'm not calling you that. Um, it was all in the red. So he's like, oh shit, we're probably gonna have to re-record this. And I thought like, how do you know that, man? This is, it sounds good, let's hear it, you know? And we played it back and um, that was it. So I just blew out the mic oh. accidentally. And so I sang that. it twice. So so what you hear is what I did, you know? So I, heard, I thought of it, wrote it down and just sang it once and that was it. So that was the first take. So it's just blown out in the red. Yeah. It's not some fancy Correct. like, production trick okay and he probably he probably has some compression on it and it has some some good chaining on it you know um i i i don't know honestly you know there's there's a i think there's a little slap back there i love slap back it, you know it takes me to bowie or you know or, or different artists i love personally or the cars you know and but it was an accident that it was that distorted but i will tell you my voice does just kind of sound like that so even if I'm singing that song and it's we don't have, you know, some sort of uh, like filter on it, my voice does just kind of sound janky like that from all the punk rock stuff that we mentioned earlier. Let's go. Nice. All right. Did you know when something is going to be a hit? Like, did you know, like that night in the studio? No way. I just thought it was great. Yeah. You know, I I because I was working on a bunch of different songs. So I had like five AWOL Nation songs no plans of success just this is what i'm doing all my bands have broken up my career is is a, basically in shambles i have all this debt now i'm about to turn 30 you know and and the soft story goes on and on i've told this story many times but i had nothing to lose so i was just making music um that felt good to me 
you know, with no one to tell me what to do one way or another. And I had no expectations. I just thought this is really, really good, <laughs> you know, and, but I didn't think anyone would hear it. Um, but I knew my brother and a few other people would definitely think it was cool. Wow. Wow. Nice. That's um, sick. now when you, when you got big, you kind of came out of this era with like you and Bastille and Milky Chance and Imagine Dragons, they kind of took alternative music in this sort of more electronic direction. Mm -hmm. um, I I know that now it's really hard for a rock band to get a big hit on mm -hmm. the radio and uh, whatever radio's left. My hometown radio station in Kansas City has converted to sports. So there is no. I heard this. Yeah. Station. Yeah. So what's the what's the landscape like now when it comes to distribution and and how are how are like station managers reacting like what's the vibe like now mm. because of the way things have happened um the vibe i don't know is the main answer but it seems like people are more open to to guitars again you know more certainly more so than when i first came out i was turned off by guitars back then as well because new metal had sort of blown out all distorted guitars and no one wanted to hear nickelback or creed or whatever anymore you know and so um i i, I tried to find power in bass synth and distortion on synth rather than guitars which is traditionally how i was raised um and and find power and that sort of edge in in older funk music like the gap band you know and stuff like that so that that was and dubstep was starting to happen as well and um you know there were a lot of great that band justice you know their first record i think that song genesis kind of blew me away and um so just being open to combining everything but that's not what your question was uh it's not the that's vibe out there is, that. you know i i think we're in a good spot because people are really into heavy music again you know um Turnstile and Knock Loose kind of both totally different, band, rock band. different bands, but they, you know, they, they stole Coachella and that was great. And, you know, this last Coachella, the seemed to be less attended. And I, I don't know, I think people are open for a change. And it seems to me, and this is me looking at the glass half full, of course, which is hard for me to do, but I'm doing it right now. Um, it's not about all of the, you know, the, a bunch of tastemakers giving us like the, the old King thumb up or thumb down, right? Or the American Idol, you're going to Hollywood or not. Like that's over. Now you can make music, release it. And people like us can d discover it, music lovers, possibly make a little viral clip or make a clip that's hilarious. And then all of a sudden a song that maybe is five, seven years old becomes a hit. Wow. What a cool time for music. And I think be as a result, the power is in our hands rather than you know the old the old guard of major labels i i just don't you know and maybe some major label people will will be disgusted with what i'm saying but it just seems i don't know what a label can provide anymore you know what what you just have to get creative and it's it's the wild west right now and so i can't wait to see what kind of great music comes out of these times say two three five years down the line um, there could be a whole new crop. Like the next Kurt Cobain could be somewhere in Baltimore right now in their basement working on something that's going to just change the world. And so I'm really excited for that. I can tell Demi's pumped up. She's ready to go because Demi's Demi's in the middle oh, of inspiring, music and stuff. Yeah, Demi's in a, like a, a, a band in New York. They play like I've seen Demi on the roof of a apartment building in Brooklyn. Like she's she's that girl. So right, yeah. yeah. All right, Aaron, we'll let you go. Thank you so much for taking the time to talk to us. Thanks for having me. I hope the uh, the lighting was was good enough for, for y'all. And like, you have a mic. She doesn't. I wish I had a mic. Hopefully, oh, you do? Oh, wow. Yeah, you just got it plugged into the side, yeah. But you sound good. Your audio is good. I don't know if you're just using your phone, but it, it works. I'm just, it using my phone. I'm just using my phone. Like, you know, there are a few times where, back to production nerd stuff, where I've, I've recorded a, a guitar on my phone and use that on the record. Yeah. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. It's the wild All West, right. you know? <laughs> uh, Yeah, yeah. Thank yeah. you so much for your time. I appreciate meeting both of you and hopefully we'll meet soon. All right. Thanks, Aaron. Bye. Bye. All right. 
He was sick. Yeah. Yeah. I feel inspired, also, Jordan. Do what? It's very inspiring today's yeah, podcast. Yeah, especially as someone who like has like a, a DIY, like kind of punk no rock problem. vibe like you do, you know, like that's the, that's the kind of energy. No, 100%. Yeah. And it's so cool. Like you wouldn't, I guess from sale, it does make sense. Like the fact that he's had all of these projects prior that were more rock based yeah. and hardcore, like you do hear it even though yeah, it's more you can polished hear all that all those sounds kind of mixed in with what he's doing now so yeah sick. all right you- so that'll be it for us as always we'll go to popdust.com for latest and pop culture music news we also have a new website jordandimmy.tv which has links to all our social media our tiktok and instagram and youtube shorts as well as full episodes um, and follow Demi on Instagram at Demi underscore Ramos and me at Jordan Edwards studio. Our next show will be with the amazingly talented Emmy grace until then we'll see you later. Mm-hmm.